I would like to start out this episode by advising the content is completely inspired by Mariah Elizabeth's own Squishy Makeover series. Hey there, I'm Di and today I'm going to be customising some squishies again. Ever since I did my first customisation with Billy and Map up there, I've been really keen to do another one. Problem is I didn't have any more whole squishies to customised, went online, ordered some packs of squishies. They've all arrived and now my mystery box is absolutely loaded up. So let's dive in there and find something to give a makeover to today. I've got a Winky Llama ice cream, a very sad looking unicorn, bug-eyed owl, a schmore and another ice cream. Two reindeer that uh, have their faces peeling off already. Two completely adorable dinosaurs that have really big fat bellies. Looks like me when I've eaten too much lunch. Look at him, he's so cute. Two ice cream cats and then an ice cream cat. So now I have three ice cream cats, which I don't even know what to do with one ice cream cat. For the first makeover, I'm gonna bust into this kit. I got it from a Kayser craft store and it cost 30 Australian dollars. So it should be decent quality, right? If this kit is gonna be a failure, I don't wanna go to the time and effort of doing the whole thing and end up with a piece of crap at the end. So following the instructions to the letter, I do a little patch test on the bottom of the squishy to see if the paint peels off. This better work. got to be kidding me. I waited the appropriate amount of time and no, I didn't sand it, but the directions didn't tell me to. Seems I have to use my own stuff and do my own thing to make this work. I'm going completely off kit for this makeover. And I start out by giving it a thorough sanding. Now, it's an ice cream cat. Got to admit, this one had me stumped. Then, as I'm looking around my craft room trying to find inspiration, I spot something I've made before. It's my ice cream critter. I made him out of a thrifted waffle cone ice cream dish and polymer clay. I'll link the video down below, but be warned, I made that video before I learnt to edit and narrate very well, so it's a little long-winded. Maybe turn up the speed while watching it. Then I actually recreated him and made this little guy using Nerdy Crafters Not Another Crap Kit. I'll link that video too. He's a pretty cute concept, so I'm thinking we can turn this squishy into the same species. Ice Creamus acriterus. It's a mammal, closely related to the cat, beaver and fox. Totally legit. I really like the ice cream hat the original had, so using an ice cream squishy, I'll make him one. But for the hat to fit, and for this to be a true ice cream critter, I need to reposition those ears. I realise I can't hack off the whole ear in one go without damaging its shape, so I carefully snip around to remove the entire ear. The other ear gets the same treatment. Next time I won't use a white background, I promise. Sorry it's so hard to see this. The ear gets attached on further down the head on a slight angle using tacky glue and an elastic band to hold it in place. While that dries, I get to making the ice cream hat out of the top scoop of this cone. I carefully cut around the pink scoop and then working it, hollowing it out so it will fit snugly on the critter's head. I also want a strawberry on top like the original, so I steal the tip of the cone to make a strawberry. But the tip is very hollow. Hmm, let's rip it open to investigate. Ooh, that looks, um, weird. Okay, I can still work with it. Lots of turning, cutting, turning and cutting. About 10 minutes worth. And I end up with something that resembles a strawberry. I've cut that bow off the ice cream. Seriously, why would someone put a bow on an ice cream? Says the woman attaching an ice cream hat to an imaginary animal. And in its place, I attach the strawberry. I've also decided the tail on the squishy is not sufficiently bushy for a true ice cream critter. So I fashion one out of an octopus tentacle. If you saw my previous squishy makeover, you'll know where that came from. While the tentacle tail dries, I'll start the long process of using slick paint to fill in all the gaps cover all the exposed foam and reinforce the joins. I'm still relatively new to squishy makeovers, so my finishes are not the greatest, but I'm not doing too badly. And it's so fun. Seriously, if you have the opportunity to customize a squishy, I highly recommend it. I've been looking forward to doing another squishy makeover since the last one. 
and I'm not sure if you guys really care for these videos, but I'm doing it regardless because it's just such a creative, immersive and fun process from start to finish. So again, I want to thank Mariah Elizabeth for bringing this art form to life and sharing it with us all. I can't get enough of it. Anyway, after so many coats of this slick paint, attaching the hat, and then more slick paint coats, we are ready for more slick paint. I'm going to use it to make the chocolate ice cream drips as seen on my other critter's hat. Yellow is fine for now as I'll paint over it later. Yay, let's paint. I lay paint over the hat in yellow areas, which is most of the squishy by this stage, with a few coats of matte white paint. Then, sticking with the ice cream critter's traditional colour of pink, I coat the critter in what I thought was the right shade, but I end up lightening it and doing it again. Then, with the milk chocolate brown, I paint over those drips I made earlier. For the hat, I settle on a darker shade of pink. Not exactly the shade of strawberry ice cream, but I needed it to be a very different shade of pink than the rest of him. Now, on the original critter, the face and other accent fur colours were grey, but for this guy, I want him to have a soft brown. Thinking of this critter compared to the last one, I realise I haven't named either of them. So let's name the original one Huck, and this guy is his brother from another mother, Jethro. Huck and Jethro. They sound like hillbillies. Ah, oh, that's fine with me. This hillbilly ice cream critter just needs a few final details to finish him off. After painting the strawberry red, I use slick paint to add the vanilla ice cream. Or maybe it's cream? I don't know, I don't mind either way. On top of his ice cream hat, he gets hundreds and thousands. Well, that's what I call them, otherwise known as sprinkles? Or maybe the long ones are sprinkles. Uh, question, what do you call the little round ball shaped coloured sprinkles? In Oz, we know them as hundreds and thousands. I keep the face much the same as the original. Huck and Jethro are always smiling, as they are always high on sugar from all the ice cream sundaes they devour. I do stuff up the mouth, but I'm able to go back in and fix it. And to finish off, I add a strawberry swell to the ice cream and colour the cone he's holding. All done. Jethro turned out all right, and he's a cute little addition to the ice cream critter clan. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Say that five times fast. Ice cream critter clan, ice cream critter clan. <coughs> nah. For the next makeover, I'm gonna make it a quick one. I'm bringing in the faceless reindeer. I don't actually have much hope for her, but what I'm wanting to do is use her as a bit of a test dummy. I've got this fabric medium that you add to acrylic paint and it changes the flexibility of the paint so you can then paint on fabric. I've used it successfully before on material, but I want to see what happens when you use it on a squishy. I go through the same steps of sanding it down, trying to be thorough on that flaky white paint, and then trimming up the rough seams. Even though I want this to be a quick, easy squishy makeover, I'm not keeping it as a reindeer. It just looks too weird to me. So I lop off her antlers and treat the stub wounds to some slick paint. I mix up some white paint with the fabric medium and get down to several coats for the base. Unfortunately, mixing the fabric medium with paint does dilute the opaqueness, so it took three coats and still wasn't fully covered. But close enough's good enough. After a quick coffee break, and looking online at some animals with small rounded ears, I settle on a panda, as I think this X reindeer could pass as one with a simple colour change and no major modifications. I want to use up some paint already mixed up from a previous project using the fabric medium. I initially went with the green paint, but switched it out to pink for the main colour, then changed it again to a lighter pink. Ooh, the top of that head is chunky. For the panda patches, I use a dark grey. I like pink and grey together, but as I'm painting on the patches, it looks really odd. Like the panda is sunburnt. Ah well, maybe she was in Oz on holidays, down the beach in the middle of summer, and forgot her sunscreen. SBF 50 Panda, you will learn for next time. By the time I'm getting her face details done, 
I really think the shape of this squishy makes far more sense as a panda rather than a reindeer. With some cute little two-toned blue eyes, big pupils and a few highlights, she's done. Even though she was just supposed to be a bit of a test dummy to see if the fabric medium would work on squishies, she's not turned out too badly. I personally think she's far better than the reindeer, although I still don't think pink was the best choice of colours, or at least not that shade of pink. The paint seems to be holding up for now, so I'll keep squishing this and the next time I do a squishy makeover, I'll update you all on how the paint is holding up. Lastly, I want to do something with these two dinosaurs. They're so friggin' adorable. At first, I'm thinking this pair are gonna be twins, and I want them really pushed up next to each other. But their heads and adjoining legs will have to be repositioned, and the only way to do that is to cut them off and stick them back on. Oh wow, that's brutal. Look at his twin just watching the whole thing play out. Uh, might be best to turn away for the next bit. I think you're traumatized enough. After playing around with the body parts for a bit, I change my game plan when I do this. A two-headed dragon? Oh yeah, I have to do that. Before I get too carried away, I want to trim off some of the rougher seam lines and sand the squishy so the paintwork will stay put. This is standard practice of Squishy Makeovers 101 as set out by the Squishy Makeover Master, Mariah Elizabeth. In order to make that second head fit, we need to cut off the other one. Head one and head two now get reunited with one body. For that, I use tacky glue to stick them on, plus some elastic bands and washi tape to hold them in place while it dries. Snug as a bug there. With that all dry, I use some slick paint to go around the seam lines to fill in the gaps and reinforce the joints as securely as possible as I don't want their little heads just randomly popping off. The head position does look a little awkward and I think it's because they've got no neck now. Uh, my plastic surgery skills are not good enough for me to reconstruct two necks. So let's just say they're tilting their heads down and later I'll try and get their eyes to reflect that pose. Once that's all dry, and it took a couple of coats to get it right, I do a few coats of matte white paint. As I'm doing the second base coat, I realised the seam line wasn't as neat or strong as I thought, so I used the slick white to reinforce it again. While I'm painting away, I realise I may not have sanded this squishy enough, or maybe over sanded, because the original paint on the squishy is really rough and flaky and it's not leaving me with a very nice surface finish. Next time, I think I might take a page out of Bellamina's book. She gives her squishies a coat of slick paint before doing the final paint job. She reckons it gives the squishies a better finish. Once the base coat is all done, you can really see how dodgy the joining work is on the back. So we just won't look too closely back there. Now for my color scheme. I'm feeling in a bit of a pink mood today. And I know my other two squishies had pink as their main colors. So this time I'll use pink as an accent colour. The other colour I love with pink is a pretty shade of green with just a hint of blue in it. So I revive some old paint I had mixed up and get to putting down the green coat on this dragon. I thought it looked just the shade I wanted in the palette, but I consistently forget these paints dry darker. So for the second coat, I add some more white. I thought I still wanted it lighter, but in the end, I'm happy with this tint of green. I know that painting a dinosaur green isn't terribly original or interesting in theory, but this green, plus all the other details I do later, just stick with me and you'll see. She, yes, at some point this dragon has become a she, ends up quite unique and terribly cute. On the muzzle, I use a lighter tin to the same green to add a bit of interest. For the belly, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted exactly. I know I wanted it pink so the green arms would stand out. But this pink was just a bit too dark. But I put down an entire coat, which was a little waste of time. Oh well. I do however like this shade for the spines going down the back. When I go back over the belly with a light pink, I can see I like it better. But it's still not quite right. It looks almost separate from the rest of her body. So I end up doing a green to pink gradient around the edges, plus continue the pink to the underside of the tail. As I am loving this colour scheme just as it is, I'm going to keep recycling the light and darker shades of pink for the details all over the dragon, except however for the eyes and mouth. I used the existing indents for the eyes and was going to make them pink, but that looked terribly demonic and I don't want creepy possessed dragons, I want cute dragons. So I end up doing different coloured eyes for each dragon head. One gets brown and the other gets blue. 
Now, while I go in to do some touch-ups and details, let's find out a bit more about this dragon... dragons. It's a two-headed Tasmanian dragon. And if you're an Aussie, you'll know. Please, people from Tassie, don't come for me. I only mean it in jest. I know certain areas from Australia have certain stigmas attached to them. Where I live, it's known as Bogan City, and I'm okay with that. Anyway, I like the ring to it, Tassie Dragons. So let's name the blue-eyed girl Taz and the brown-eyed girl Doris. Not quite sure why Doris, it's just her name. I've kept them looking pretty identical, just different eye colours, slightly different mouth shape. And then when I get to the freckles on the face, Taz gets freckles on her nose and Doris gets them on her cheeks. I think Taz is a little more confident with her head slightly up, but Doris is a bit more shy with her head tilted down. And oh my word, Taz and Doris are so freaking adorable. I love their colours. I'm relatively happy with the faces and their pose and how all the little details just brought it all together. The Tassie Dragon is definitely my favourite squishy of the day. Well, that's definitely all I have time for today. Hope to see you next time.